First of all, for those of you who have ever wondered where I got that from, all you got to do is turn the page back. <laughs> if you didn't notice that in the psalm, there is where that prayer comes from. The interesting reading we have here this morning, how many of us actually follow it is my question. No one wants to volunteer to say yes. The, the interesting part is the bottom part, which I'm going to touch on very shortly here, and then we're going to talk about the, the top part more. But the, the interesting part there, it says at the bottom, if any of you has a hand that has caused you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to go to heaven with one hand rather than to hell with two. How many of you have ever done something with your hands that you wish you hadn't? Do all of you still have both of your hands? How many of you have ever gone someplace on your feet that you wish you hadn't? Do, both, do you still have both feet? How many of you ever looked at something or someone in a... I already got people shaking their heads, so there you go. That's all I'm going to say on that. Now we'll move to the first part. It's an interesting little section here because John comes to Jesus and says, these people are doing things in power in your name. And we tried to tell them to stop because they're not following us. It just baffles me, really. But it shows you that differences between the churches or differences between denominations is not something that we have only in our present time. Right? It shows us that there was differences in the church earlier. And it's actually interesting because the word here for trying to stop is used only one other time in the Gospel of Mark. This one word in the Greek is used only one other time in the Gospel of Mark. And it's later on in chapter 10, which is the next chapter, where there are children trying to come to Jesus and the disciples are trying to stop them. It's the only other time. And at both times, it's the disciples, the twelve who are supposed to be the ones who get it, that are trying to stop other people from doing things in Jesus' name and trying to stop people from coming to Jesus. Now we could just stop right there and ponder that for the next ten minutes. How many of us are in that same place of trying to stop other people from doing things in, in Jesus' name or trying to keep people from coming to Jesus. Not intentionally, but through our actions. How many of you have ever seen, I've seen it quite a few times, the, the meme on Facebook that says not going to church because they're filled with hypocrites is like going, not going to the gym because it's filled with people in, out of shape or something like that, right? You know? We don't go to church because all I'm going to find in church is a bunch of hypocrites. Well, there's always room for one more. Right? I'll be the first to say that I don't do everything right. If you don't believe me, you can ask my wife. She'll tell you. Right? But here are the disciples telling these people that they need to stop. And here's the other thing that's interesting about this is it's not a one-time event. It's not like the disciples saw this guy casting out demons and they went over to him and they said, you can't do that because you're not part of us. You're not following us. The words here are actually, the tense of the words actually show that it's something that happened over and over and over again. He is casting out demons. It's a present tense verb. That means he's doing something right now that's going to have implications that keep going into the future. And the other two verbs are imperfect, which means, you didn't know you were going to get a, a grammar lesson this morning, did you? Imperfect tense means that it's an action that happens in the past that has continuing actions into the future. It means it's happened before. They tried to stop him. But it didn't work. Because he's not following us. He's not a part of our group. Right? Maybe the disciples here, here's the thing we have to look at. And last week, I think it was last week's lesson, it was either last week's or the week before, the disciples were, were told to cast out a demon and they couldn't do it, so Jesus had to come and do it for them. And here's this guy, he's not a part of our group, and he's able to do what we're not able to do. Have you ever seen somebody that's able to do something that you wish you could do that you can't, and you watch them do it? How does that make you feel? about this big, right? You don't feel good when you see somebody else doing something that you think you should be able to do. We have tendencies to want to lash out at that person and, and you know, right? That's human nature. 
that's, that's neither good nor bad. That's just the way that we're made. It all depends on how you follow through on those thoughts and actions, to actions is what makes it good or bad. Right? We all see people doing things we wish we could do. But here's the thing. Do all of us have the same gifts? Right? There's ways in the... There's, there's things that can tell who's in and who's out. According to Matthew chapter 7, ethical conduct is required to be a follower of Jesus. According to 1 John chapter 4, you have to have a clear doctrinal confession. I'm not going to ask how many of you have a clear doctrinal confession. According to the shepherd of Hermes, how many of you have ever heard of the shepherd of Hermes? Is that like a half a hand? It was a second century book written, um, one of the books that's not included in, the new, in, in, our, in our Bible. A wholesome relationship to the whole congregation is required to be a part of the following of God. It means we have to not necessarily like everybody, but we have to get along with everybody, right? There can be no dissension in the ranks of the body of Christ. And that's not just us, that's St. Pius down the street, St. Benedict's across town, St. Max's over in Savisky, and, you know, United Methodist in Swamico. You know, everybody. We can have no dissensions. According to pseudo-Paul, which means it's not Paul, but it's actually written under the name of Paul, in 3 Corinthians, which is from the 3rd century, acceptance of the authority of the apostles, which means you have to believe in the 12 apostles and that they had more power or more authority than the rest of us do. And, but according to Paul, in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, he gives the clearest understanding of what it means to be a follower of Christ. He states that there are many kinds of astonishing phenomenon and experiences of God even in the heathen world, that's verse 2, but that possessions of the Spirit is shown by the acknowledgement of Jesus as Lord and a willingness to serve others. So the way to know that you're a part of the body of Christ is to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord and be willing to give somebody else something that they need. Right? Which leads us... Right, thank you. Good job. I'll pay you later. Which means... Anyone who gives a cup of water to a believer will not lose their reward, right? That's the next thing that Jesus says after he says, after John comes in and says, tell these people to stop because they're not part of our group is really what John is saying. They're not following us. They're not with us. Us. Right? That congregation's doing something better than we are, Jesus. Make them stop. <laughs> Right? It sounds ludicrous when you say it that way, but that's exactly what John was saying. And Jesus said, but anybody that gives somebody else a cup of water in my name is, is doing a good deed, and I'm not going to make them stop. Because whoever is not against us, if they're not stopping us, then they're for us. Right? And it's interesting here, that word to drink, to give to drink, is used, again, twice. Trying to stop is used twice. And give to drink, the word for in Greek, they're both single words in Greek, is used twice. One here in our, in our Gospel reading, and that's twice in the Gospel of Mark. When someone, the second time that it is used is when someone fills a sponge with sour wine and puts it on a stick and holds it up for Jesus to drink. You see, it's all about us understanding who we are and what our gifts are. It doesn't mean that we have to do everything. Each and every one of us has been given a gift or gifts that we should use in the ministry and mission of God. And what are those gifts? Singing. I got Clyde real quick, says singing. <laughs> Who would have thunk that one for a moment there, right? <laughs> surprising, it is. It's very surprising. Preaching. Teaching. Teaching. Leadership. Or can we do everything? No, we can't. And you know what? That's okay. Because we're not supposed to do everything. We're supposed to support everybody else that's out there, and we're supposed to give of our own gifts to God's mission and ministry. 
We're supposed to give of our own time. We're supposed to give of our own talents. We're supposed to give of our own treasures so that God's mission and ministry can continue to move forward. That's what it's about. It's not about us asking somebody else to stop doing something because they can do something that we can't. It's about us looking upon them and going, good for you, how can I support you? And let me do my thing over here. Right? It's not about being better than anybody else. It's not about us all doing the same thing. It's about us all following Christ and giving our best out of the gifts that we've been given. That's what it's about. It's about us using ourselves, our time, our talents, and our treasures in service of God. So don't ever try to stop anybody or be jealous of anybody because they can do something that you can't. Applaud them and help them in any way they can. And I bet in return, they'll do the same for you. And in doing that, we will show the world who God is and who Christ is and who we follow because they'll know that we are Christians Thank you. They'll know that we are Christians by our love. love. Because we have love for one another, they will see Christ in us and be drawn to come and be a part of our gathering. And that's not just here. That's our gathering as the body of Christ. That's St. Pius, St. Benedict, St. Max's, United Methodist, Oswamico, insert name of church here wherever they are, wherever they're gathering, because we are all gathered together as God's body. So use your gifts and give a cup of water or a song or a lesson or a donation. Like how I snuck that one in there. (laughs) Or your time. Because that's what it's about using the gifts that God's given us so that His mission can be done. So use your gifts so that God's love will be made known.